Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect Speculation video. And I want to welcome you to another episode. In this episode, we are going to talk about several different things, including some undervalued comics, three comics that have been optioned for movies and TV shows, and then also three comics that have some cameo appearances of some characters that may be poised for an increase. So I certainly want to encourage you to stay tuned. Before we get going, I want to let you all know that earlier this week, Go Collect launched a new feature, specifically a price guide for concert posters. This is something that has been in the works for a while, and it was just launched earlier this week, so I certainly want to encourage you to check it out. There is a link down in the description where you can get some details, and if you do decide that you want to upgrade and all that kind of stuff with your membership, you might have a chance at getting a pretty awesome t-shirt. In this first blog post, the blogger does a pretty solid job of making a case for a few books that you may want to check out. And the argument that the blogger makes is that the character that we'll talk about in a second is associated with some characters that are pretty hot right now, specifically Kamala Khan, Riri Williams, and the super popular Miles Morales. And specifically, we are talking about Nadia Van Dyne. And this is a character that is a relatively new character, but because she is associated with the Champions team and all of these other folks that I just mentioned, there could be some magic that gets made here because those characters are super hot. She hasn't yet got the attention that they have, but there is a chance that some, some magic again could be made. So if you believe that there are some possibilities here, you may want to take a look at this blog post. The blogger talks about a couple of books, and I want to mention a few of them to you. The first one is Civil War number two, issue number one. Specifically, the free comic book day comic. Raw copies of this book can actually be picked up for somewhere between $10 to $20, which isn't bad at all. But if you want to spend a couple of extra dollars, you can get a 9.8 for about $100. The problem there, however, is that that is about 50% higher than the FMV. So it's definitely something to be uh, cautious of. You may be able to get some really nice raw copies and send them in and actually get some 9.8s, but you definitely want to be careful if you decide to go that route. The blogger talks about an additional book that I want to mention to you, specifically the all new, all different Avengers issue number nine. Now, what's really cool about this book is that it is actually the first cover appearance of Nadia as the wasp and this cover is really gorgeous because she is flying out of the vision's hands right on the cover just a an awesome awesome book but another book that you may want to be on the lookout for is an alex ross sketch cover design variant this one's gorgeous it really is a gorgeous cover i am a huge fan of alex ross and this is one, if I were to see it out there, I might have to pick it up myself. The blogger goes on to talk about one additional book that I'm not going to mention, but I want to encourage you to click on the link down in the description of this video. Check out the blog post for yourself. So this is the second blog post in as many weeks that we've spoken about Kang the Conqueror. And I think part of what sparked this second blog post 
is that Jonathan Majors was recently cast as Kang and that has put the character and his associated books front and center for yet another week. And this is something that has been long rumored to be out there that Kang was coming to the MCU. We now have confirmation and we also have a face for Kang who will be appearing in Ant-Man number three. And there is still a lot of speculation as to how Kang is going to show up, which version of Kang might show up, because there are actually several versions of Kang the Conqueror, past, present, and future, partly because he is a time traveler, but also because he's been in the Marvel landscape for many, many decades. In this blog post, the blogger does a pretty good job of highlighting several different books that you may want to check out. So I'm only gonna mention two of the books that the blogger talks about, partly because in the previous episode, we spoke about some other books, so I wanna do something just a little bit different here. The first book that I wanna to mention to you is actually a Fantastic Four book, specifically FF issue number 19. And this marked the first appearance of the Pharaoh Rama Tut, also known as Kang the Conqueror. And this specific issue came out in 1963, a full year before Avengers issue number eight. The FMV for a 9.0 of this book will run you about $1,000. And if you drop a half grade, you can actually shave off about $250. So not exactly a cheap book, but certainly not all that expensive either. The next book that I wanna to mention to you, and I wanna mention this one because I think that this book is awesome, is Avengers issue number 23 from December of 1965. And this is actually an early appearance of Kang the Conqueror. He appears on the cover, and this is a really awesome cover that is done by Jack King Kirby. The colors are great. But what's really awesome is that there's a little bit of history here where John Romita actually redrew part of Jack Kirby's artwork. And there's a reason for it, but I am not going to tell you what that reason is because I want you to read the blog post. The link to it down in the description. So as I mentioned in the intro, there are three books that I'm going to talk about very briefly in this next section that are discussed by the blogger. All three of these books have actually been optioned for movies or TV shows, that kind of stuff. Now, what I will tell you is that just because something is optioned doesn't mean that it will ever see the light of day. So I just want to offer that cautionary note to you. And in some of these books that we're going to talk about have had some ebbs and flows over the years, partly because they, in one case, at least it has been optioned for some time. And when that news broke, it was super hot and then it's cooled off. And there's a possibility that it may actually heat back up. The book in question is Oblivion Song, issue number one. And this is a Tyler Kirkham creation, the same guy that did The Walking Dead. Now, what's really cool about this book is that Kirkham actually mentioned earlier this month that they are still in daily development on this project. So there is the possibility that this one may indeed see the light of day. The blogger points out here that the book you may want to look at when it comes to Oblivion Song, the specific book, is the, the pink variant. And on the lower right hand side of this book, the signature is actually in pink. That is a one that is a like a special ratio variant type of book that if you're going to get it, that might be the one that you check out. The next book that I want to mention is Black Hammer number one. And this book too has had some ebbs and flows over the recent months since it was announced that Netflix had optioned this particular title. And again, this is one that you want to look at because maybe there is some possibilities there. The great thing about this one is that the average price for this book is only around $50. So hopefully if you do decide to pick it up, you can get yourself 
an awesome deal. So this next book is one that I am not familiar with at all, and you might not be either, but that is part of the reason why we do the blog post and the speculation recap videos to bring some awareness so that you guys can go do some research. The title in question is Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, specifically issue number one. Now this title was recently optioned by Picture Start Media, a media company that I am not all that familiar with, but again, you may want to do some research, investigate it for yourself, and decide if any of these three titles are ones that you want to pick up. So what's really awesome about this next blog post is that every single book that the blogger talks about is under $30. So we're not talking about speculation books that are $500 or a thousand or whatever. These are all under 30 bucks, which make them relatively inexpensive for most people to be able to pick up if they decide to do it because it's not a huge outlay of cash. But the blogger also does something a little different in that they are not focused on first appearances. They are specifically looking at cameo appearances. So all three books are cameo appearances under $30. The very first book that the blogger talks about is Amazing Spider-Man issue number one from 2014. Now, this book can be purchased somewhere between $15 and $30, but what makes it awesome is that it's actually a cameo appearance of Cindy Moon, aka Silk. And Silk is super hot right now, as is Miles Morales and some of the other characters that I've talked about elsewhere in this episode. But again, this cameo appearance is relatively inexpensive. And if the first appearance continues to heat up, then there could be some magic for the cameo. So the last book that I want to mention to you is Venom issue number 25. And this is actually the cameo appearance of Codex. And this is some of that Venom no action that is happening right now. Donny Cates, that is just all the rage. And the King in Black is coming in December. And so, again, this is a cameo appearance of a character who has some potential if Donny continues to do what it is that he does with the Venom series. So, again, I only talked about two, but there are a total of three cameo appearances, all under $30. The link to this blog post down in the description. Give it a read. In this next blog post, the blogger talks about some undervalued comics that you may want to check out. And they specifically talk about three books. And I guess this is the week of like threes because every blogger is like talking about three different things. Uh, but this, this blogger is indeed talking about three comics. And I want to talk about one DC book and one Marvel book. The DC book in question is The Brave and the Bold, issue number 54. And in this book, it is basically the first time that Aqualad, Robin, and Kid Flash team up to essentially form the Teen Titans, even though they weren't known by that name for a few more issues, specifically in Brave and the Bold, issue number 60. But, you know, a lot of collectors have come to accept that issue number 54 is indeed the team's first appearance. You can actually acquire a pretty nice mid-grade copy of this book, specifically a CGC 8.5 copy of this for about a thousand dollars, which isn't too bad. And if you wanted to spend a lot less money than that, you can actually drop down to a CGC 2.5 for under $200, which again, isn't all that bad. So the Marvel book that I want to mention to you is a little confounding in that this book is associated with a Marvel movie, but for some reason or another is not performing all that well. The book in question is Tales to Astonish issue number 44, and this is the first appearance of the Wasp, and it was released in 1963. When you look at some of the sales data associated with this book, in June of last year, a 3.0 copy sold for $493. In late spring of this year, the book actually dropped 
to two different sales at $300 and $380. Looking a little bit deeper, four of the five graded copies between a 5.0 and a 7.0 have also dropped by double digit percentages over the exact same time period. So there is definitely something that is going on here, but again, it could be an opportunity for people to be able to pick up an awesome book of a great character that has some long-term potential given where the MCU may be headed. So again, the link to this blog post is down in the description. I encourage you to check it out. So clearly we have saved the best for last. And I say that because this last blog post is about my favorite character, that being Spider-Man. But it is also the final installment in a three-part series that the blogger has been working on in which he takes a look at comics that are associated with costumes worn by Spider-Man. And in this final installment, the blogger talks about two costumes, one of which is my favorite, uh, but the first one that he mentions is the Spider-Man 2099 suit. And this suit was first introduced in Amazing Spider-Man 365. Awesome comic, awesome cover, awesome suit. The blogger goes on to talk about again one of my favorites, that being the Iron Spider Armor. And this was first debuted in Amazing Spider-Man 529 as part of the Civil War storyline. And in this storyline, Tony basically made Peter a really awesome suit that had some extra arms and some other little gadgets. And in this right here is an awesome uh, costume. It is an awesome cover and also associated with a really awesome story, that being the Civil War. The blogger goes on in this blog post to actually look at the values of the comics that I just mentioned here a few moments ago. Looks at the performance of those comics over time. And if you believe that there is some potential that the comics associated with the costumes worn by Peter Parker could go up in value, you definitely want to check out this blog post. Look at the data because the blogger kind of makes a case here, lays out the data, I think quite nicely. So you definitely want to check this one out um, because there could be some opportunities here for you. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another episode. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if indeed you did, I want to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. And if you truly enjoyed yourself, I want you to come back next week when we get to do this all over again.